called Peter and I'm from Uganda. I had life threats due to some political reasons back home and that forced me out. I've been in Hong Kong here for two years, slightly more. I'm 19. I come from Sri Lanka. Me, my mom and my two younger sisters are currently living in Hong Kong as refugees waiting to resettle to the United States of America. Hong Kong has long been an attractive destination for asylum seekers. The city has ample international transport links and a reputation for safety. Around 14,000 refugees live in Hong Kong, according to the latest government figures. I was involved in political uh, activism, supporting the political party that I, I belong to, and of course raising the numbers of the membership with a hope that in the forthcoming election would raise the majority. In Uganda, the regime will not let you do that freely. There are always attempts to stop you. You are arrested, false charges are slapped over you, including terrorism and treason. If you are found guilty, then the punishment is death. This young woman agreed to speak with us on the condition that we do not show her face. She asked us to call her Jay out of concern for her family's safety. My whole family came to Hong Kong when I was four years old, hoping to start a new life away from our home country. My dad, he was an army shoulder. He did not want to be part of it, so he quit. However, that's not allowed it in Sri Lanka, so he had to run away and he could not leave us behind because they would track us down. It's very dangerous for our, my family, even for our relatives. So we had to come to Hong Kong. I chose to come to Hong Kong. It was not just a choice, but it was um, the only available alternative to have me sort my situation then. The biggest reason behind that, I had a court case that I was supposed to attend to and uh, I had a fear that court case wasn't going to go down with me well. So within the three days, I was supposed to urgently find a safe landing. I didn't have a chance to process a real visa to destinations that would probably be better. Through my search, I happened to find that Hong Kong was a visa-free entry for me. All I needed was an air ticket. Uh, we came here in 2005 and then we got accepted as refugees in 2006. But that process is to resettle into another country because refugees cannot stay in Hong Kong as permanent residents. It's quite challenging to live in Hong Kong. Uh, when I came to Hong Kong, I was four. You know, I had to learn English and Chinese to avoid language barrier. And even then, it was hard to get around Hong Kong because of our status. The Hong Kong government has not signed the 1951 UN Refugee Convention. So asylum seekers wait months or years for the government to handle their claims. During their wait, they can now work and must survive on government subsidies and donations from charity groups. Fewer than 1% of all asylum claims are accepted. The whole process is to put you as a victim or a culprit who has overstayed and therefore you do not have any other right accorded to you except you are an offender of the immigration rules of the city. The life is intensely difficult. This is one of the most expensive cities to survive in and here you don't have any source of income whatsoever. You have a living allowance of 1,200 Hong Kong dollars and you're supposed to eat every meal for 30 days on that. You have a house allowance of 1,500 Hong Kong dollars. You can hardly find any place. The only chance that you can find is to share a very tiny room, six of you. The crowdness, the inconvenience is, is 
just extreme. So you've got to learn how to depend on others day in, day out. You're not certain of when ever you'll get out of that situation. It takes a lot of work. It takes courage to reconstruct your self-esteem and think of being useful in any way. But after, of course, a very long time, I started getting involved with the community. The more you get involved, the more you now get into people who will understand the plight of your life. Individuals or groups will then come up, hey, can we help? Now, if you graduate to that level, that's a big improvement you made <laughs> for your life. Those are very few people who are like that. I have to say I am blessed to be one of those. Our case was applied to many, many countries. However, all of them got rejected. Yeah, it was really hard coping with that throughout the years because we were like, every time they would say, we're gonna apply to this country, we were like, get a little happy, a little hope, you know, we're gonna finally get out of the status of refugees so we can continue our lives. But recently, our case was applied to America and it got accepted. We're hoping to resettle there soon. It would be very cheesy for me to say, but if I did not go through these stages and difficulties, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I want to treasure that. Even though it's hard, even though it's a very difficult journey, I want to remember that I was a refugee and how I got here. So what I'm doing now is um, I want to focus on the resettlement part because when the, your case has been accepted, you're forwarded to UNHSR, uh, which eventually starts to process your resettlement to third country. How long that takes is not known, but I want to focus on that. Three days after this interview in late 2019, Jay and her family moved to the United States. They were finally allowed to resettle there after a 15-year wait in Hong Kong. Though Peter has also been granted asylum, he still has no word about when he will be able to leave.